All right. Um, so, were there any questions about the uh, about the assignment? I mean, did you have did anybody encounter any trouble with nesting the tags, or did you have did you get out of sequence and have to go back and figure out where you got out of balance or? I just no? had trouble just figuring out what the flood. As far as which tag to use yeah. in each place, yeah, right? As far as what did what. Yeah. So there's something, uh, uh, the form tag and the table tags are, are nested tags. So the form table and then the lists that we're about to talk about today. We're going to talk about lists and tables today. Those are really combination nested tags. So they have, you know, just like in the form, you have the form and you have the field set and you have the legend and you have, you know, individual input fields. The same in a tag, or in a table rather, you have the table tag and you have the header and the body and the footer of the table and then you have rows and, and cells in the table. So those are all kind of combination elements. So where, where you have to nest multiple tags together in order to produce one thing. Um, the list tags are the same way where you have a list and then you have items inside the list. So those um, can be a little dicey because they're, they're, those, those semantic tags have more, have more requirements. You have to use multiple tags. Whereas the individual you know, paragraph or label, those are typically standalone. You're not really nesting those as much as you're just combining them with each other, right? Um, Today we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about divs, and we're going to talk about lists, and we're going to talk about wire and tables and wireframing. Okay, and I hopefully we'll be able to get all that covered. Your assignment is posted. Um, I'll I'll go over that real quick towards the end of class, but it's it should be pretty straightforward. It's a two-part assignment. I want uh, you need to submit a wireframe. So there's a link on the um, in the modules for this week uh, to a YouTube video that talks about wireframing with Google Drawings. So you should be able to watch that, and it should guide you through everything you need to do. That, so the wireframe uh, that you need to submit is a PDF document. And then um, I want you to submit an HTML document which implements the raw HTML for your wireframe. Okay? So the HTML that you submit won't look anything like the wireframe. Okay? Because we're going to come back and put CSS on that in the, in the coming weeks. Okay? So you're going to need to complete this week's assignment because you're going to need it in a couple of weeks. You're going to pick up from where we end this week and you're going to finish. Okay? All right, so watch that video. Um, and then let's just jump right in, OK? All right, so um, let's first look at, uh, I want to look at um, lists. So we ended here, we ended at this point um, on um, last week. And this was your homework assignment. So everybody was able to get this um, and did pretty well. Um, here we, we have some special characters. If you want to include, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up a fiddle and we're just going to type along as we go here. If you want to include special characters in your code, things like, you know, I want to, if I wanted to include, if I wanted to actually have the P tag show up on my page in an HTML code, you can't just put an, an, as an angle bracket P angle bracket and have that show up in the HTML file because it's a tag, right? So you have to use an escape sequence to, to be able to put that in. So in this case, use the ampersand. Um, in order to get an ampersand, you use this ampersand and the word amp. In order to get a less than sign, you would use LT, ampersand LT followed by a semicolon. Okay? Um, and so, so you have to use these escape characters to get the, um, here's, you know, ampersands, apostrophes, <coughs> quotations greater than and less than. Those are generally what you're going to come into. There's some built-in symbols, fractional symbols, trademarks, et cetera. So for example, if you wanted to, if, if you wanted to have, um, we can go ahead and type this in to see how it shows up. Okay? But basically, if you want to, to render HTML code on your page, you have to use these escape characters to get the special, the special characters in. Okay? So let's do an example. Okay, so I can't just type this. Okay, this is not going to work. Okay, so when I run this, it's not rendering the the actual tag here. Okay, can you guys see that on the projector? Do I need to turn the the light off? There we go. That's good, huh? Can you everybody still see their keyboards? So here's the so this doesn't work because the 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 p tag itself here 
is, is, is HTML code. So the, the browser is trying to render it as HTML code. So what I have to do is I have to escape these. So instead of doing this, I'm going to use the ampersand. I'm going to say ampersand, um, and that's going to be less than and a semicolon. Okay. Then when I run this, notice I, I begin, I'm beginning to form the tag in there. So I get the, the, the less than symbol, the angle bracket. I can then put my P in, and then I can do ampersand greater than and the semicolon. And I can get the P tag. So if I want to include HTML code itself, I have to use these escape characters. Okay. We also get we have other tags. So let's 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 just look at this one. What do you think this one says? This is a paragraph. So this is this is what we just did with the actual paragraph tag itself. Okay. Um, we can try some of these special ones. So. We can just, I'm just going to cut and paste this to, for in the interest of time. Okay. So we get special trademark symbol, um, et cetera. Notice here if I wanted to actually put the special character ampersand trade in. So here ampersand trade with a semicolon. I can't, that's HTML code by itself, so I can't display that. So I actually have to escape out the the ampersand symbol in order to, to make that display. Okay? So be aware that if you're trying to, to include HTML code on your page or, or quotes or, or apostrophes or things like that, you're going to need to escape them um, appropriately. Okay? Let's try, let's try the um, um, hello, how are you? said the instructor. Okay. So here, if we want to print this, okay, in that case it's working just by virtue of, of a little luck there, but typically you would want to escape this out with the quote. Okay. And you would get that. Now, remember I said that, that some browsers can be forgiving of improperly formed HTML code? Sometimes you make a mistake in your code, you leave out a tag, you don't, you don't use the escape code or, or these for these special characters. Sometimes the browser is going to render that right. Chrome is a very forgiving browser. Chrome will, will render almost anything, and it gets very close to just about every, uh, every malformed HTML that you have. Internet Explorer, on the other hand, just kind of doesn't. <laughs> so. Um, Chrome is very forgiving, and, and will if you deviate from the specification of HTML in your code, often it's going to work anyway. Okay? However, you don't want to. You need to make sure that you're, that you're, that you're using um, properly formatted HTML. Okay? Um, all right. Any questions on escaping and special characters? Yes, Ali. Yes, it does. And so in order to comment on HTML, you use this. Um, so that's what you use. So, that, so then that is then rendered as a comment. So that is the, the tag is, is, the, is the exclamation point dash dash, and the closing tag is the dash dash angle bracket. Okay? So anything that you comment there, anything you include in between those tags is, is going to be a comment. It's multiple lines, right? So it just it goes on and on until. And it, and if your if your editor is giving you color coding, it will in, it will include that. So up here, I could comment the whole thing out. And now the whole thing is commented. Okay. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Okay, so we have um, we have two types of lists. Um, in HTML, we have unordered lists and ordered lists. I'll give you one guess what the difference is between them. One's in order and one's not. So really, the only difference between an ordered list and an unordered list is the symbol, is the default symbol. An ordered list is going to have a number, and an unordered list is typically bullets. Okay? So let's go ahead and um, go back to our fiddle here, and let's try an unordered list. So I'm just going to put an unordered list tag. This is a, a combination tag, so I declare a list, and then I declare the list items by using the li tag. Okay? 
An ordered list is a container tag, so it has a be an opening and a closing tag. And then the list item is also a container tag. Um, first, second, third, okay? And I get, um, and I get an, an unordered list, okay? If I do the same thing, I'm just going to cut and paste this. And I use the ordered list, which is the OL tag, and I execute that. I'm going to get the same thing, only I get numbers instead of bullets. Okay? Now, when we get to style here, you can apply a lot of style to unordered lists and ordered lists. You can, you can specify what you want the bullet marker to be. What do you want Roman numerals or, or Gregorian numbers or Greek numbers in the, um, for, for the ordered list? Do you want diamond bullets or round bullets? You can use um, images as bullets if, if you want to. You can specify the, the padding that's in between the lists, the, the list itself. So it's, you, know, you can say if I, want the, um, uh, if I want them to be further apart, you know, top to bottom, then I can put padding in between them, et cetera. I can turn the bullets on and off, et cetera. So there's lots of formatting here. Um, just out of curiosity, when you see, um, I don't know if our, my go-to site has a, so when you see these, um, I don't know if this is one, I should have had one teed up here, but often when you see these types of, when you see these types of, of, uh, um, of menus, see here, we can look at this one. I know for a fact that this one is is a is a list because I wrote it. So this um, so this menu that you see up here at the top, this is actually an unordered list. So this is a, this is if we look at the inspection on that, we can see that in the HTML code, that is being rendered as an unordered list. Okay, so often when you see menus that go across the top, horizontal menus that go across the top of pages or that go horizontally across pages. Those are unordered lists that are being, are being built side to side to go horizontally using CSS, okay? By changing the, the, display, the display sequence and the, and the placement of, the, of those internal containers, okay? The default rendering, the default rendering is, is for each container to be, to, dis, to be displayed as a block. So the UL is a container and then each LI tag inside the UL container is displayed in a block format, which means that it takes up the entire width of its, of its parent container. And, is, so, and whatever container comes after that is displayed like blocks being stacked up one right after the other. We can change those to be in line so that instead of being displayed on top of each other, they're displayed next to each other, side, side by side, right to left. And then we can put padding in between them to space them out a little bit. Okay? And... Um, and we can and we can, can we can convert them. So if you look at, um, so we'll be working on that as when we get into um, into the CSS examples, where we'll be coming here and applying CSS to the li. Um, I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to get it wrong because I have to look it up every time. Display um, inline block. Let's see, does that work? If I do that. Hey, look at that. Okay, so there. So now I've converted it to be horizontal, a horizontal menu, and then I can put padding. Um, I can put padding. I'm just going to put um, eight pixels padding around it, and now they're spread out a little bit. And then I can do, um, I can do a hover, and I can change the background. Let's see. I'll change the the color to be red when I hover over it. Okay, so now I'm getting a menu that has some, some interaction, right? Okay, notice that when I, when I get rid of the, when I just make it inline block, I lose, I, by default, I'm losing my, my bullet markers and my, uh, um, and my numbers. Okay, all right, so this, is, so this is probably the most common way to make a menu, a horizontal menu on the web. There are other ways, and, and different websites do them differently, but this is the most common approach. Okay? All right. So lists. Any questions on lists? 
You can include a link. So the, 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 the li tag is a container tag, so you can put whatever you want in it. You can put paragraphs in there. You can put, um, you can put images. You can put links. Whatever you want in there goes in there just fine. OK? Um, all right, any questions on lists? There's an ordered list. It's just like an unordered list, except it has numbers. OK? All right. So let's talk about tables. Tables are um, uh, a complex tag. Um, it's a combination tag. So it's made up of, of the table tag, which just like the form declares the, the beginning and the end of the table. OK? You then have the, the table itself has three sections. It has the head, it has the body, and the foot. OK? So there are tags head, uh, T head, T foot, and T body that you can then declare uh, for each of those. You don't have to declare those. If you don't declare, uh, if you don't specify T head, T foot, T body, then the browser, the default is going to assume that it's in the body. Okay? So if you don't say which section it's in, the browser typically will assume it's in the body. Okay? But you should, be, you should be explicit and use those. If you want them to be empty, so if you don't have a header or a footer on your table, then you can just exclude those and, and they'll be empty by default. Okay? No, they, regardless of the order that you define head, foot, and body within the HTML, um, the, the head's always going to be displayed first, the body in the middle, and the foot at the bottom. So if I put the footer at the beginning of my table definition, when the browser renders it, it's going to render it at the end of the table, okay? even if it's declared at, at the top of the, of the source code. Within each, within each section, the head, the foot, and the body, you declare rows using the TR tag, that stands for table row. And then you, de you declare a table cell called t using TD. Okay? There's a special kind of, of table tag called a TH, which is typically used for header and footer um, cells, which allows you to apply different style to, to those rows or to those cells separately from the content of the table itself. Okay? All right, so let's try to make one. Okay? Here's an example that if you wanted to try to, to, to work through this in JS Fiddle, you can. I'm just going to go to Fiddle, and we're just going to make one and see what happens as we go. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and title this, and I'm going to call it um, Week 3 Table Example. So you'll be able to find this in my, um, um, in my, in my JS Fiddle link. Okay? First thing we want to do is declare the table. And okay, give ourselves some space to work there. Always, as we're typing, always make sure that you are declaring the opening and the ending tags as you go here. Okay? I don't know when, if each of you, which, as you learn C Sharp or, or Python or Java, I'm sure that you, some of you, some people struggle with, with the, the blocks more than others, making sure that your, that your opening and closing blocks are in balance. But um, here at, you, you, it happens all the time here in HTML, so you really have no choice. You, you have to keep them clean, OK? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to declare a header. And here in my header, I'm going to, I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to declare a row. And then inside my row, I'm going to declare a header. And this is going to be column one. And I'm going to declare column two, OK? Now if I render that. I've got something wrong. It's, I'm getting a highlight here because something's wrong. OK, it's finding a, it's looking, it's, it's a syntax error in my code. It says tag must be paired missing slash tr. And I'm just missing the, the close bracket on this tr here. OK? So now I'm getting some help from my, from my JS Fiddle editor there. OK? So now I get, um, I get, a, table, I get a table there. Okay, I can't really tell it's a table because the, the, the cells and rows don't have any 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 borders. Okay, so just as a as a trick, I'm going to come in here in my CS, um, and I'm going to turn on the border. Okay, and now when I run that, um, I can get. I'm going to get borders around all of my elements. Okay, 
So I'm using this just so that, so to help us as we're working here, so that I can just see the table as it develops, okay? This is a great, when you get into CSS and you're working on layouts, this is kind of a great uh, approach where you can, um, where you can just apply, you can turn on the borders around all the elements because it kind of helps you to see on the page where the elements are. So as you're trying to align them and style them and get them in position relative to each other and working in, in context on the page as you like them, you can turn the borders on so you can kind of see where the edges and the boundaries of those things are so that you can, it helps you to, to debug your, your display. And then when you're done, you can just turn off all the borders that you don't want to see, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and leave those borders on just so that we can see the table develop as we go. So I only have, I'm only gonna put one row in my head. I'm gonna go ahead and do a body here. Here I'm gonna declare a row. And here I'm gonna use the table cell, the TD instead of the TH, okay? Um, and typically here on my, on my structure, I'm going to, I'm gonna put it in like this. So even though, so here, even though the, the TR tag right here we see as a container tag, and because it's gonna have multi-line container, I'm gonna go ahead and, and start it and end it on separate lines and do some indentation. The TD tag here, this is a container tag as well, but it's rarely gonna be more than one, than one line of, of, of HTML code I put in here. So I'm gonna do it all in one line and do my starting and ending on the same line. Alternatively, you could format it like this, but really that's just a little overkill on the indentation. Plus, technically all of this blank space is now in your HTML code and it's not gonna be rendered in the code, you won't be able to see it, but it's gonna be there. And so it's just better to, to avoid that when you can, okay? So just as a, as a formatting tip, okay? All right, so then this becomes my, my content for row one. I can do content, this is gonna be row one, column two, this is column one. So when I render that, I now get content in my rows. I can go ahead, I'm just gonna cut and paste this just for the sake of time. So now this is gonna be row two as we go, okay? What else do you notice about, about this when I added content into and cells into the individual rows? What else happened here? It included the borders, right? Because I, I, in my CSS, I applied the borders to all of the elements, to the, t, to the table, the TH, and the, t, and the TDs. But it also increased the, the width of the table, didn't it? Before, the, column, the width of my table was just the, the width of column one, column two of that text. But once I added, once I added uh, longer content to, to the rows, the, the width of each of those columns increased, okay? So here, if I were to, um, if I were to just take this out, then that column would go back to its default width. Okay. So now this is where it gets hairy. If I'm building a column, this is you spend a lot of time if you're using tables to format them so that you you have kind of minimum minimum space in each column that you have the width of the table where you want it to be on the page and that your columns are coming out in kind of useful, useful space, so with a useful width. Sometimes you get lucky and your content is just good and it just lines up for you, but um, that is, can be an issue sometimes with dealing with column widths, okay? The default rendering of the browser is it will make the column, uh, it will make the column as wide as it can, as wide as it needs to be to contain all of the, all of the text in the column. And it, and it will do that in trying to keep the table itself from wrapping. So. If, you, if, the, if, the, if it can't fit all the columns, the default rendering, if it can't fit all the columns on the page, in the width of the page, then it will do a word wrap on, it will pick one of the columns and do word wrap. It will never wrap the table. It was always gonna display that table at 100% width, okay? I'm just gonna do um, an undo here to get my content back. Um, so for example here, if I came in here and I typed a whole bunch of, of data here, something that's just gonna overflow the table, okay? We see now that, that uh, the browser is rendering that table at 100% width. It is never going to wrap the table 
but it has just kind of picked a place convenient to it on where to wrap the, the, the width of the columns. Okay? And you can override that with CSS if you feel a, real, a need to. I'm just going to undo there, Control-Z control to, to get back. Okay, now let's do the foot. Okay, and I'm going to do a row here, and I'm going to do, I'm just going to use TD. And I'm going to say, oops, keep that all in one line. Um, totals, column one. totals column two, okay? And then I can render that and I get the totals, okay? Now, real quick, if I were to take this body and I'm just gonna cut it and I'm gonna paste it here at the end, okay, when I run that, even though my body is, 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 is after the header and the footer in my source code, it's still rendering the body in between the header and the footer. So because I've declared those semantic relationships, this is the head of the table, this is the body of the table, it's always going to display them in order, head, body, foot, okay? So these, these tags are known as uh, the body and the foot. Those are, those are section tags, so they're, they're a special semantic kind of tag that says this, the content here is the body of the table, and so regardless of where it, it occurs in, in the source code, it's to be rendered um, in the middle, okay? I'm just going to control Z to put that back. Okay. All right, you can do things like span multiple columns. So here, I'm just going to insert a row in the middle, and I'm going to create a table, and I'm going to say wide cell. And I'm going to come up here, on, and on my TD, I'm going to put an attribute, call span equals two. Then when I run this, I get a wide cell. Can everybody see that here, wide cell? is now spanning both of the columns. Notice here, you can tell it's spanning the whole column because there's no, because I've got the borders turned on, there's nothing here in the center. So this is all one cell spanning across two columns, okay? If I were to declare a row here, um, and I were to say call span equals 9999, then this is going to, oops, got that out of sequence. So now this is going to span all the columns. So there's only two columns in my table, and I said this spans 9,999 columns. It's not going to make the table wider. It's just going to span whatever I have. Okay? If I get my, my, my rows out of sequence or out of balance, this is going to be row one, column three. If I run here, I now get column three, in the first row because I declared it. In my second row, I have a wide cell, but it's only, it's only doing a column span of two, so it's, a, it's two columns wide and the third column is, is not there. The third column is not empty, it's just not there, okay? So, and so I'm not getting any, any borders or anything like that. There's nothing in that. There's no header, there's no cell in that position in the table, okay? But we see that my spans all the columns that has 9999 as the call span, it's going ahead and, and making itself wider automatically to span across all those columns, okay? You can inadvertently make this wider as well if I do call span here. And let's say I do a call span here on 10. Um, and run. Okay? It's now making this, this, this row wider as well, okay? So if you, get your, if you get your rows out of balance with each, with each other and you have different number of columns in each row, then the tables can start to look a little funky, okay? That's generally not something you want to do. If you're going to build a table, you're going to want to declare every cell. Make sure that you declare every row and that you keep the number of columns in each row consistent uh, so that your formatting is, is so that it's going gonna, it's gonna to look appropriate on the, on the page. Okay, I'm just going to take that out. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Okay, so and I'm going to get rid of column three here. Just kind of get us back to where we are. So now inside, um, inside each row, I can go ahead in here and inside the cell, I can put an image. Uh, 
And uh, let me just go get the Google Doodle for the day. Uh, copy image address. So here in my, I can put that in my row. Now when I run in the cell, is going to be the image, okay? If I really wanted to get crazy, I could put another table inside one of those cells if I really wanted to. I don't know why you would want to, but if you wanted to, you could, okay? So you can put whatever you want inside, inside the, the TD container. I can put an image, I can put links, I can put, um, uh, I can put a paragraph, I can put labels, I can put whatever I want. It's a container, so I can put whatever I want in there, right? Okay. Um, I also have this, um, uh, there's a, on the TR tag, there's a row span where I can say, go ahead and make this span three rows, okay? So, so now this wide column is now actually taking up three rows. I can't really tell that that's the case, okay? Because it's not, um, um, wait a minute, I think I did that wrong. Sorry about that. It's actually here. So I can come in here and say, this on the TD tag. All right, so I'm just going to erase this part from the from the recorded video. So there's no evidence that I ever did anything incorrectly. So here I can say on this, I want to do a row span on this. I want to make make this span two rows. So this cell is now going to be a tall a tall cell, and then I can put a TD next to it. That's going to be normal cell. Okay. So now when I run that, we see, notice I'm getting that that cell is now spanning two rows. Notice it's also taking up the row underneath it. So now what was on content row two, which is, is now being pushed down into, into row five. So by, by virtue of making that, a, giving that a row span on that cell, I've now defined already the, the corresponding, the corresponding cell in the following row. Okay. So if you're going to make if you're going to make something taller, you have to you have to make sure that you accommodate that in your in your in your nesting as you go down the rows. Okay. So what do we take away from from the column containers or from the table containers? It's pretty straightforward as long as you're doing single row single row tables, you know, with with same number of, of columns. Okay. You can get really crazy. If you're trying to use a table here to do some really wild formatting, you're probably, you're probably using the table wrong. Okay, tables are generally going to be very simple. Um, rows with same number of columns. Maybe you'll have, sometimes you might get a, a tall cell that will span a couple of rows because you just have a, some kind of, 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 of vertical heading or vertical sub, subdivision you want to do. But generally, they're going to be pretty basic, straightforward tables. Okay. So, um, let's see. This is no longer row two. That's now one, two, three, four. This is now row five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to clean that up. I'm going to leave this example um, in my in my JS Fiddle library. If you want to come back and look at it. Um, so, any questions about tables? If not, we'll jump into the next thing. Nope? Okay. Let's see what's next. So, um, there are a bunch of examples here for tables in the slides um, that you can look at um, if you want to, to work through these. Just kind of explore them and see what they have. This border element here, you can, you can turn the border of a table on and off using this border attribute. Um, but that is generally um, not used anymore, and it's, it's, uh, uh, we favor CSS using the border, con the border controls. Again, talking about, um, talking about structure versus presentation. You know, how many columns, you know, the call span and the row span, those are structure of, of the CSS or of the page, whereas what the border looks like is really presentation. So we're going to want to, even though we can specify that using attributes, we're going to want to... Uh, defer that to CSS where we handle all of our presentation. Okay, all right. So now um, let's look at um, uh, 
let's look at the wireframe that we did here. Let's see if I have a wireframe. So here's is an example of the wireframe. Let's go over the let's go over the assignment real quick, and then we will jump into wireframes. Okay. So what we're building is a is going to be a a um, we're going to build an HTML screen, an HTML page that looks that allows us to. It's going to be a very simple page, but it's going to let us do some HTML and some CSS to to, to apply some style to it. Okay. What it's going to be is a simple page that has uh, that has a header with a menu and a, and a site logo and maybe a, a banner image, and it's going to have two panels with information about a college, the same information or the same categories of information about two different colleges side by side, and it's going to have a little form for me to to enter to send feedback, and then it's going to have a footer with some social media links. Okay, so we can look at the wireframe. You 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 can see here in your in your page, you need to, you're going to need to declare in your wireframe all of these sections, all of these pieces of, of, of content on your page. Okay, a header section, a banner image, a content section that has these two re that has these three elements inside, two school boxes that are the same as each other. Okay, and then a footer. Okay, when I look at mine, where's the example? Okay, this is the wireframe that I have. Okay, so the wireframe is is really just it's exactly that it's just a basic drawing it's a quick rendering it's like pseudocode for HTML. Okay, it's me using you know very simple very simple images very simple text to kind of move things around on the page where I want where I want to use this I use this using Google Drawing, which uh, the the video that that's linked in the in the image will go through. I actually created a text box here and said this is going to be a school image. In the wireframe, they'll actually use a, um, a rectangle here with an X through it to indicate that that's going to be an image of some kind that's going to be replaced. That's going to be replaced. I've got a table here. I have a little unordered list. I have a little ordered list here. I'm going to have a form. There's going to be a button. I've kind of given myself some indication that I'm maybe going to have a background on this header and footer section. Okay, so all I've done here is just it's just a rough draft, a quick penciling. Of what the page is going to look like. So this is wireframing. We use wireframing as a it's like pseudocode. It's 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 a, a little bit of planning. It doesn't take very long to do. I can change it really easily. So I can if I'm working with a client or with a user and we're trying to decide what the page is going to look like, I can show them this. We can move things around very rapidly, um, and they can you know you know pretend to click on things. And you can even show if you click on this. Then I can flip over to the second PDF, and this will be the page that you mod that you navigate to. So it allows you to do a very quick rendering of your um, of what your page and your site's going to look like before you actually do all the coding. Okay, it's much less expensive and less time consuming to change a wireframe than it is to change an actual HTML page. Okay, um, we're using Google Drawing to do this for single page um, frames. There are some great wireframing tools out there. Uh, that allow you to actually create multiple page sites that you can actually link between, and um, and so forth, and really give some great um, design style to those. We're just we're st most of what we do in here is going to be single page, um, single page um, apps for for a bit, and so we're just going to stick with Google Drawing, which is usually more than enough for what we need to do. Okay, so this is my example. Okay, yours can look something like this. If you wanted to copy this format exactly, that's fine. Um, if you wanted to to, um, to to mix it up a little bit, that's fine. There are a couple of requirements here in that um, you're going to have to put your 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 these two boxes here, the school the school information boxes, are going to need to be side side by side. Okay, that's a requirement because we're going to work on we're going to work on that with CSS and positioning elements on the page relative to each other. Okay. So, but other than these, I mean, your banner image, I mean, you can, you know, you can kind of play around with this if you want to do this in different order. You know, that's up to you. The only requirement is that your school comparison boxes are side by side. Okay. All right. So this is wireframing, so you can you can go through and do that. You must hit all these elements. So there, you're going to have to have all of these things in your wireframe. And even if your drawing turns out to look very very similar to mine, that's fine by me as long you know the exercise here. 
is the exercise in wireframing and thinking about what your site's going to look like um, and, um, um, and getting experience with the drawing tool. Okay. If you go back to the assignment, so you need to submit a PDF document that has the wireframe. Okay, and, I, and so the example that I just showed you can be seen um, using this link to the Google Drive folder. I'm also going to want to see um, an HTML file. Okay, of the implementation. Okay, so this is the actual HTML code that I created that I, without any, without any CSS, that I will then come back and apply my CSS to. Okay? Now if we look at, so, so this is, it's very ugly, and it all displays top to bottom, and so it's going to look like this until we come back and, and turn, it on, turn it on with CSS. Okay? If we wanted to see what it actually looks like when it's done, I have the one that we did um, previously. And it actually looks like actually looks like this. It's not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, but it's it's so this has actually got some CSS on it. It's not particularly pretty, but I've I've touched every element on the page with some kind of style. Okay, and I've got a little bit of JavaScript running here in the back where I can actually dynamically change these panels out. Okay. And I've got links here with some images, okay? So this is very attainable, okay? So this will be the next thing we're going to do. So you're going to do your wireframe, and you're going to create your raw HTML. And then you're going to um, come back in a couple of weeks. We're going to come back to this and apply some style, and you're going to make it, um, I don't know if you'd call this pretty, but you're going to make it less ugly, <laughs> all right? So now this, um, this raw page that we have here, this is what the HTML renders. This, this is the unstyled output of this, of this page. That's the same source code. The only difference between those two is I put a style sheet on it. Okay? So this, this, the, the, the HTML that's behind this is identical to the HTML, to the HTML that's, that's in your example. Okay? Which is this. Okay? What do we see when we look here? We see an image, right? We see, it, and this looks like an, an unordered list. There's another image. This looks like an input. That's probably a select box. This is a label or a paragraph. Here's an image. Here's a table, right? This looks like a header, like a like a paragraph or a label, maybe. Here's an ordered list. Okay, we can kind of look at this, and we can kind of start seeing the the, the tags and the the elements. Okay, if we look at um, at our wireframe here, we can see those things as well. Okay, but what do we see here in, in this? We kind of see some sections taking place here, don't we? Some, so we see here this is kind of a header section, and inside the header section it's got an image. The header section itself is going to have some kind of background maybe, and it's got a, this little menu with some links here, and then after the header section I've got this banner image, and then I've got these two things that look the same. There's kind of some sections going on here, aren't there? So these are... What we, these are where we come in. We're going to start using the div tag. Okay? The div tag allows us to group these elements together so that we can now have these, this section. So this label and this drop-down box and this panel here, this, is, this, is all, this whole thing is going to be in a div. Okay? This is one container. And then inside that container, I've got maybe a second container that has my selection box here. And I have another container that's got that I have this border around, and then I've got a name here and an image. I've got a container that has this table in it. So this is a whole bunch of containers that I'm nesting in, okay? I'm using the div tag to make those containers, okay? The reason I'm, when, if we read the book, um, in the book it talks about container tags and, 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 and other elements called, called article and section and aside. Those are all, all talked about in chapter three of your book. Those are all known as semantic container tags. So those describe structurally the kind of container that you're, that you're defining. This is an article. So if you think about a blog site that's going to have an article on it, you might have a repeating article, uh, a set of repeating article um, sections. 
that each one contains a different article on the site. And depending on if it's a, if it's a multiple view, maybe you have a summary page, you might have five articles with the title of the article in some snippet of text. Or maybe if it's the actual, the whole article, and maybe it's the article section has the entire uh, contents of the article itself. And a side is often used for sidebars. You know, I'm going to put something in an aside, and then I'm going to style that to be so that it's to the right of the, of the main content on the page. Okay? Those are semantic tags, meaning that by themselves, they don't do anything on the page. They don't render differently on the page than any of the other containers. They just give meaning to, to your HTML. So if I, as I'm reading through it, I can kind of see, oh, this, whoever developed this, this structure means this to be an article and there's going to be repeating. This is a section, this is an aside. I can kind of get some guidance from the, from the author of the HTML what they intended those, those things to be if I'm trying to modify that. The div tag is just like all these other semantic tags, only it has no context with it. Okay? So I just, I just declare something as a div and it's just a container. Okay? So now as I declare those divs, I don't have any guidance really from the original author what the intention was of those, of those divs, but so be it. The reason div is an older tag than some of the other semantic tags, they were added as the HTML specification grew over the years. And so if you get into some of the really old browsers, you know, IE 7 and 8, if you are ever so unlucky to, to run up against one of those, then some of those, some of those older semantic tags just aren't recognized by the browser. Okay, so those tags are used, those semantic tags article section are used regularly. Um, however, the most common one you'll, you're going to see is the div tag. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to JS Fiddle. And let's, um, let's go ahead and start a new one. And let's explore the div tag a little bit. Okay, so real simple. I'm just going to declare a div, a div here, and then inside my div, I'm going to declare an image. Um, I just am lucky to have that still on my on my clipboard. Let me close that, and then here I'm going to declare an an unordered list, li home. Uh, li google i'll give that i'll make that a link okay let me tidy that up a little bit okay so now i have a div tag i mean here it's rendering you know, if I were to get rid of the div tags, if I take the div tags out, it renders the same. Okay, it renders identically. But by I'm just going to control Z there and put the div tags back. But by putting the div tags in, I'm now declaring that as a container. And now I can adjust the width and height and relative position of those elements as a whole. Think of it in context of when you're doing a drawing or you're in PowerPoint or something like that and you group things together. So you take multiple individual elements and you, write, you select them, you right click and you say group. So now you're, you, when you move those things, you move them all together as one unit, even though they are individual elements. That's kind of like a div, okay? So, um, so we can come here and we can get another div. So now I'm gonna create a second one. Um, and maybe here I'm gonna do, a, a, and I'm gonna nest an internal div there. And then inside my internal div, I'm going to do an input. Okay. And then here I'm going to do a table. Come to, so we can kind of get an idea there. Okay, so now we're going to render those things. My table's coming on. I can turn my, if I come here to my CSS and I can turn on the border, I can just say, put a border on everything. One pixel solid black. 
when I run that, we can now see that I've got all of these elements everywhere I've got borders. When I use CSS, if I use the, the asterisk, this is a wildcard and matches everything. So that just says for everything, turn the border on. Okay? So now we can see here all of these things. So you see these elements going around the side here. So I've got a div tag that goes all around this whole thing. I've got an image here. So see my, my, my image here, the width, of my, the width of my div is 100%. So the div, this initial div, this one right here that we're looking at is rendered here. So this is the border on that tag. It goes down like this, okay? So we can see that it's got, its width is, it's taking up 100% of its, of its container that's it, that it is in, which is this body of this page, okay? The image we see here, we can see the, the border around the image. The image is actually taking up, it's not 100% width. It's only the, whatever the width of the image is. My unordered list here, we can see that it's by default taking up the entire width of, of its container. In this case, that is the width, it's 100% of its containing, of its containing container, okay, of its parent container. If I come in here and I say, um, make this 30% um, um, of, the, of the page, notice that now my tag, now this div is not the whole width, it's now, it's now on. We see this, this border here, this is actually the body. Because I'm, I've turned on, the, I've turned on the, the border on every element on the screen, which means I now have a border around the body of, of the page as well. But we can see here that my, my div, which used to be 100%, is now only 30%. My image is actually running out of the container. It's, it's wider than the container, so I, I would have to, to go back and, and style that somehow to get it to, if I want it to hold in my container. My, my unordered list is now automatically adjusted to this size. It is still 100% of the width of its parent container, but it is now, but its parent container is only 30% of the width of the screen, right? So this, this is why we're doing these containers, is so that I can, so that I can adjust um, and style all of these elements individually, okay? All right, so I'll just put that back and save it again. So now when we look at our, um, um, when you look at the wireframe, where are you seeing the divs here? How many, just out, off the top of your head, I mean, where do you see a, a, a div container? Where? You, you see six? Where, where do you see them? So that this, whole, this whole header section, this is probably a div, right? This banner image is probably a div. Each school thing is a div, right? Well, that's probably the body is around the whole thing, probably. Yeah. So you might, you know, if if, if you have, you, you don't really need, you don't really need a div to surround the entire body because you can style the body at that point. So here I've got, you know, this form probably is in a div, this footer is in a div, but I'm looking at this, this is probably multiple divs. So here I've got a logo, I've got an image, and I've got a menu. So even inside this div. Because I'm putting them side by side, prob I probably have each one of these in a div by itself. Okay, so here, when I came here and styled this, um, when I came here and styled this, or and rendered this, and I got the the div containers by itself, the image and and the UL, I'm going to want them to be side by side, right? So probably what I'm going to wind up doing is is putting um, putting this image in a div, okay, and then putting this unordered list in a div as well. Let me tidy that up a little bit, okay. So now when I when I do this, I I can actually say um, I can give it an inline class, and when we get into um, into CSS, I can now put these containers side by side. Okay. So I'm gonna run them, now they're side by side 
instead of, because by default, a div is going to render as a block. So every, every div container is going to render underneath whatever comes before it by default. So there, the default display uh, attribute of a div is block, which means it's going to be div, 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 top to bottom. And if I want to put them side by side, I need to be able to address those containers individually. Right? But I'm going to want to be able to put these side by side because I'm going to want the, because in looking at my, um, um, in looking at my, my example, notice I've got the menu is justified all the way to the right and the logo is all the way to the left. So I'm going to want to be able to use some internal divs so that I can, so that I can size those divs proportionately and align them proportionately so that I can get the text to show up in, on, the, on the part of the page I want it. Okay? So when we look at this again, now we're looking at div. I've got one div around this whole thing. I've got one div around the logo image. I've got one div around this. Probably my banner image is probably only one div. There's only one thing in that container, which is the banner image, right? So here I've got a div. I've got two things that look the same here. So I've got a div around this, this right one, or this left one rather, and I've got a div around this right one, okay? And inside that I probably have a div for the, for the selection box. I've got a div here so I can draw this border, right? So, I mean, there's, looks like maybe six on the outer, but I mean, they add up rapidly, okay? And there are even, there are a lot of pages where you see something that looks like a table that is actually rendered entirely using nested div tags. So, which, if, when you see those, those generally come from some kind of framework that's doing that for you. It's, you really want to avoid coding div tags nested dozens deep by hand if you, yeah, you really don't want to do that. <laughs> but, but you can, I mean, if you, but that gets pretty hairy. When you get into the more complex pages, usually um, the starting point for, for the designer of those pages is using some kind of framework. Um, Bootstrap, for example, is a, is a CSS styling framework that is, um, just by virtue of loading, of setting a reference to the CSS bootstrap pages, uh, bootstrap files, you get a lot of kind of default styling that just is just built into your, um, and then you can, you, you can style tables and buttons just by adding a class value. So, so those frameworks have done a lot of the work for you. So generally when you start getting into more complex pages, you're going to be adopting a framework of some kind. Um, in this class, we're going to do it all by hand just so that you understand what's going on under the covers and then you'll appreciate the framework even that much more once you get there. Okay. All right. Any questions? Any questions about the assignment? About what you're supposed to do? Okay. All right. So the assignment says also, oh, where's the assignment? It's here. The assignment says because I want you to upload a PDF file, you can only submit one kind of file or one kind of submission for each assignment. So you can either submit a URL or, or, a P, or a file for a particular assignment in Canvas. You can't do both. It's just a limitation of the Canvas tool. So on this, on this week, you are going to be required to submit a PDF and to submit an HTML file for your raw design. Okay, so you can, you can do your raw design in Fiddle if you want, and then you can just paste that into an HTML file and upload it to Canvas. Okay, but this week you're going to need to upload a PDF file and an HTML file instead of the, the fiddle link, okay? So should we run through again real quick how to do, how to work on, um, um, okay? So I'm using VS Code. This works, um, I'm gonna close that. So I'm, I'm working in VS Code. This works the same if you're using Sublime or Notepad or whatever you want, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here on VS Code and I'm going to say, give me a new window. Okay? I would recommend that you try VS Code. Okay? If you don't want to or VS Code you're having trouble, there's another editor called Atom, A-T-O-M, that's excellent as well. Okay? And has, for HTML and CSS, has very similar feature sets to VS Code. Okay? VS Code, I think, is a tremendous tool and likely you can use for every programming assignment you have anywhere in, in, your, in your work. I know some of the classes will use NetBeans or Eclipse, but Visual Studio Code, you can do HTML and CSS, you can do Java, you can do Python projects, you can do Django, you can do Ruby on Rails if that's what you're doing. You can do you know, 
every, you, this Visual Studio Code will support every programming environment. Um, well, probably not every, but almost every, anything that you'll come into contact with um, here at school. So I would highly recommend that you use it. But if you can use whichever one you want. So what I do here is I'm going to come in and say, uh, I created a new window in VS Code. I'm going to then say open a folder here. And I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for, for now. And this is going to be like, you know, week three assignment, right? Just because I have good organizational skills, because I learned that in high school. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to open that folder. And now in VS Code, I get this folder um, browser over here. I usually just open editors. I usually just close that. Here, I get this folder browser over here where I can see all the contents of my folder, which currently there's nothing in it. So I have a little shortcut here where I can start a new file. Um, and I can say raw school page.html. OK? And I can create that and save it. And by I, before I, st I start editing it, I want to save it with the appropriate extension because then I'm going to get a formatting help uh, and, and context clues while I type. OK? So now, I'm gonna, so now I have to type, because I'm not in fiddle anymore, I have to include my body and my header and my head. OK? I'm going to put a title in here. OK? And in my body, now I'm going to start doing my div. And here's my second div. And this is my, this is going to be my logo image. OK? And then here I'm going to have another div, and this is going to be my UL. Here's my LI. Here's my other LI. OK? So now I'm being careful here to, as I'm done with this div, that's, that's all my header, right? So now I want to start my, my banner image. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to create another div. I'm being careful where in the file I'm inserting new div. Notice I get some, some context clues here. Okay, when I'm sitting on a closing tag, the VS Code, the editor, and Adam will do this too, is going to highlight the, 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 the opposing tag. So if, I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm, if my cursor's on the closing tag, I'm going to get a matching ending tag. Same thing here if I'm on the opening tag. I'll get a cursor that will tell me where the ending tag lives. I also get these, these collapsible features. So I can come in here and say, just collapse that div and collapse this div. So now if the divs are really, really long, I can just collapse them so now I don't have to scroll past them as I go. So you can see that it's clearly, clearly collapsed because I've got these arrows are, are turned. And also I'm missing row numbers here. Okay? So then I can turn those on and off. Okay? So that helps me to, to hide sections of my code as I'm typing others so that I can, um, so I don't inadvertently make a mistake or if I'm trying to figure out where something is starting and ending, or I've gotten out of balance somehow, I can use those, those clues to, um, uh, to help me that. Does, does JS Fiddle have that, have that folding? Yeah, JS Fiddle has the folding feature too. Okay, Folding or collapse, where I can use the, and it's also got the, the highlights for the, opposing, for the opposing tags. Okay. So then here, this is going to be my image. And this image is going to be, you know, my banner. OK. So now I save that. I'm just going to do Command S, Control S to save. If I come over here, I now want to render this in a browser. OK. I can, uh, um, um, I can come here and, and I can just do copy the relative path, um, either from the, from the tab or from from the, the tree explorer here. And then I can go over to, to my browser and I can just paste that in. Whoops. I'm sorry, I want to copy the absolute path, not the relative path. OK? Everybody see that? It's copy absolute path, not the relative path. Because I want, I want the full path from the root of my machine. Because I, I need all the directories that get me there, OK? And now I'm rendered, OK? So now, as I, so now I'm flipping back to my editor. As I come back and change this, I 
I can add, I save that, I go back to my, to my, to my browser and I refresh the page and it's just going to reload whatever changes I made. Okay. I always, I tend to try to use keyboard shortcuts as much as possible. So the refresh on, I'm using a Mac and so the refresh is command R. Any, if, if you can also just click the reload button here, but, um, you're going to be flipping back and forth quite a bit as you do this. And, you, and just as a pro tip, the more you're able to keep the, your hand off your mouse, the better off you're going to be. If the mouse is going to really slow you down when you're, when you're doing a lot of coding. So try to learn the keyboard shortcuts for everything you're doing to avoid having to handle that mouse. Okay, notice here that I, I got this image here. This is my banner image. I declared it as banner.png, but it, there is no file called banner.png, and so it's, I'm just getting that kind of broken image link, which is just default by, by Chrome. Okay? Any questions about your assignment? I'm very confident and hopeful that all of you do well. <laughs>